Hello there, I'm Sir Fancy and welcome in this VR tutorial where I will show you how to create simple PDA that will be attached to your body. You can pick it up, look at it and also a simple quest system that you will have on that PDA and you can conquer the world, whatever you want to do with your game. <laughs> Alright, so super simple showing. You can see that here on the left I have this weird blue box that teleports with me. If I travel somewhere I can pick it up. It will tell me what to do. I should take that gun, so let's drop it. It's teleport. It teleports back there. Let's actually pick that gun. And now if I take it again with other hand, it changed to kill that zombie. And I would have to reload for that and you don't need to see that. So I will drop it again and hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. For most VR tutorials I'm using VR expansion plugin, but you don't really need it for this one. But still, I would definitely recommend you to look into that. I have a few videos about that tutorials, how to reload gun and stuff. So click on the link in the description, etc, etc. And let's stop wasting your time and get to the tutorial. So for start, we will need some grabable object. And there is nothing better than this editor cube. So let's click on it, right click and let's browse to asset. Now let's right click and simply duplicate it and let's call it HUD device because we will need to differentiate it from regular HUD and let's move it to folder where you will work with it in my case it's AA files because that's the one I have used in previous tutorials so let's get to it all right we don't really need to do anything here let's go to viewport and let's change its scale so it actually looks like some PDA or tab that, we, that can have possibly some list of quests or so Alright, that looks about right, so now we need to add there a text. If you want something a bit more interactive and most importantly something that looks much better, you are probably better off if you just create here user interface and widget and play with that. But we won't really do that. We will just add here and text, text render. You can see that it's like weirdly deformed and that's because we are attaching it to static mesh component that has deformed scale. So what we will simply do is click back on the text and right in scale, let's switch it from relative to world. And now let's rotate it and put it on this PDA. We will call it PDA. Let's change its scale. I would actually absolute scale leave like that because I don't want to deform it in any way and just change here X and Y scale or probably world size will be easier to interact with. Let's set it to 5 and put it right here. Alright, so now let's get to event graph and we should have here event on grip release. And what we will do here is to actually destroy the actor. Keep calm, it will all make sense in the end. Let's put here short delay because we want to see it falling down because by, uh, by default this mesh has enabled gravity which we will and physics which means what that's what I mean by gravity. We will actually unkick uh, simulate physics because now it will only simulate it after you let it go. By default it will be just staying in the air without any physics. Let's leave delay on 0.2 and then what we will do is to actually destroy after. And after that let's ask to our player. And we have here a VR pawn, somewhere here, a Vive pawn character, which, which is the default one in VR expansion plugin template. So let's cast to it. Cast to Vive pawn character. And as object, we will set here get player pawn. And that's about it, what we can do now. Now we need to click on our Vive pawn character. And let's create here a new custom event. Or we can actually even do function, but let's do custom event. You are probably better off if you create a function, it should be less performance heavy. So right click and create here custom event. And let's call it spawn underscroll PDA. And what we want to do from that is add child actor component. So child actor is basically when you store one blueprint with all its functionality inside another blueprint. It's used quite often especially with pawns and player characters. So now we'll click on that and we will set the blueprint we want to spawn as the new one we have just created which is HUD Davis. Now we need to set where it should spawn so we'll compile it, click on viewport and simply add here an arrow. Let's put it here for example, so it will be always somewhere here. If you want you can just copy this coordinates, but I prefer to have here something that I can move with because it's easier when you are designing something, you don't really know where you want to you have your PDA all the time and with this it's easier to change. And let's actually name it all and we will call it PDA 
holder. All right, compile, and you can see that it's all attached to VR root reference, which is pretty important because that means if you teleport somewhere, it will teleport with you. So now we will take that relative transform from PDA holder. So get relative transform and connect it just here. So now back in HUD device, we will simply take it and use that custom event. So let's power PDA just like this. Wonderful. So now what you can do is to simply pick up that cube, look if that is something you should do, for example, like pressing the like button or something, I don't know. And then once you let it go, it will destroy itself and spawn a new one here at this location attached to player. And it will wait there until you pick it up again. So now the problem is that we don't have that first PDA that should be destroyed and spawned again. And that's for that that is a super simple solution. We will need to find event begin play which is right here. If you are not sure, just put here event begin play and it will take it to you, they take you there. And we will simply add here pin. You can see that I have here quite a lot of pins. It's probably not the best idea to have too much on event begin play uh, or event kick, that's even worse. Because like this, you are prolonging time of loading of your games that can put a player quite off. So we'll take it from here and, and let's just use that custom event. We'll start with it. So spawn PDA. And let's see how it all works in VR. All right, I'm in the game and you can see on this left part, I have his, I have not his, I have a mine PDA, you can look at it. Text is pretty readable, which is super cool. Sadly, it's a little bit buggy, hopefully not on your end. And if I let it go, it will disappear after a while and it should spawn here a new one. So anytime I teleport somewhere, I have here PDA at my hand that I can take and look at. And let's get it away of this Nazi doctor. All right, so now we have our PDA device that it's always with us, but now let's this, let's make sure that it actually gives us some quest and something to do. And for that, we will actually want to create new variable and we need to store information about current quest somewhere. And for that, I will probably use game mode blueprint, but it's up to you. The important thing is that you need to have something that will store information. So we will click on blueprints and let's use Warp Override, Game Mode, Edit Steam VR, and let's edit Steam VR GM. GM. All right, and what we will do here now is create a new variable, and that variable should call be current quest, and let's call it okay, instance editable, and let's call it let's set it just to text. All right, so now let's click on this HUD device. So we will set it up so every time someone will uh, grip it and want to look at it, it will change its current quest. So we will cast to team VR GM, which is that game mode we have just created. And for this object, let's just set get game mode. And as team VR GM, we will just need to take that text, which uh, we have actually called it current quest. So we will get current quest file and set it to our text render. Let's set text and connect it to our current quest. And by default, let's get back to edit Steam VR, edit Steam game mode. And our current quest will be take gun. But now what to do? You would only take a gun. But now we will actually look at our BP gun, edit it. And after it will be gripped, I went on grip. We will simply cast to Steam VRGM and get game mode, of course. We will set current quest and let's set it to kill dead zombie dot dot dot. Compile and see if it all works. All right, so now as you can see, it's just on text, but once I grip it up, it changes it. It changed to take a gun, so I will let it go. It's still on text. You can put there some default text or whatever you want. Teleport quickly here to take the gun. Because now if I take it, it's still on take a gun. Yep. Quickly take that gun, teleport away. And pick it up. And look at that, it has changed to kill the zombie and it doesn't fit there. That's why you should use a hat. 
if you want you can of course change it and bypass it let's say that you don't want to change that text only when you pick it up in that case you probably wouldn't want to store that information in game mode and just update that text every time it actually changes it's all up to you you can customize it for your own game as much as you want if you want to learn about vr expansion plugin i would definitely recommend other tutorials i have made for it if you want project files for this and other tutorials you can find it on my patreon that would be that from me so surfancy out